Breaking tonight, will the next revolution be in China? Astonishing scenes as Chinese people take to the streets to call for an end to authoritarian lockdown censorship and Xi Jinping's rule. Evening, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Welcome to The Next Revolution, live tonight on this holiday weekend. We are pro-worker, pro-family, pro-community, and especially pro-America. More on those protests in China in a moment. But first, the fight for government accountability here in America. As Republicans take the majority in the House, they've made clear that accountability will be a central focus. How do we hold this government accountable? There is no check and balance right now, but we'll be able to bring that. We will hold this administration accountable. You want to hold this administration accountable? I believe join with us and uh, we can hold this administration accountable. For years, that's been central to our mission here, too. From the earliest days of this show, we brought you Swamp Watch, where we repeatedly exposed the corruption of the ruling establishment, the climate lobby, the big banks, the military-industrial complex, all of them and many, many more, corruptly in bed with lawmakers, regulators, bureaucrats in the administrative state. When Biden became president, we launched the Biden Swamp and brought you investigations of Washington swamp lobbyists turned top Biden aide Steve Ricchetti and his brother Jeff. Biden's brothers, Frank and James, corruptly using the Biden name as leverage for their personal business interests. The non-stop revolving door between big business and government, shysty lobbyists and swamp monsters like the Podestas and Anita Dunn exploiting public office for private gain. And, of course, the most notable example of our effort to uncover establishment wrongdoing, our special investigation into the origins of COVID. We were the first on television to lay out how Anthony Fauci recklessly broke Obama and Trump administration rules to commission risky gain-of-function experiments in the Wuhan Institute of Virology, the most likely cause of the pandemic that turned the world upside down. With this change of political control in Washington and in the expectation that we'll start to see a lot more establishment wrongdoing uncovered, we're announcing tonight a renewed emphasis on accountability. Here on this show, in the weeks and months ahead, you can expect to see reporting and investigations, not just Washington, but everywhere the powerful are doing things that need to be exposed. Of course, in Washington, the focus will be the work of the newly Republican-led committees in the House, whether that's Catherine McMorris Rogers on the origins of COVID and the handling of the pandemic, Michael McCall on Biden's disgraceful surrender to the Taliban and catastrophic withdrawal from Afghanistan, or Jim Jordan on the Biden regime's frightening authoritarian abuse of the FBI and federal law enforcement to target parents and the administration's political opponents. But right out of the gate, the headlines were taken by someone who has in recent months become a frequent guest on this show in anticipation of this exact moment. James Comer, the likely next chair of the House Oversight Committee, announcing a full-throated investigation into Biden family corruption. Committee Republicans have uncovered evidence of federal crimes committed by and to the benefit of members of the president's family. These include conspiracy or defrauding the United States, wire fraud, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act, violations of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, violations of the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, tax evasion, money laundering, and conspiracy to commit money laundering. Of course, the usual suspects immediately bleated back. We want Republicans that can work together with Democrats. We want Democrats that can work with Republicans. We want them to get things done. To find common ground to get things done for everyday Americans. They really do want both parties to work together. We are calling on uh, uh, all parties to come together. Yeah, because the Democrats really came together with Republicans when they were in charge of the House. You'd never find Nancy Pelosi, I don't know, setting up committees to investigate her political opponents. Of course we want politicians to get things done. But not any old thing. Sensible, mainstream things that make people's lives better. For the last two years, the Democrat-controlled Congress has advanced stupid, far-left policies that made lives worse. Just stopping that would be positive change. And in any case, why should it be a choice between getting things done 
and delivering long overdue accountability. Accountability is itself a vital function of government. The Constitution, Article 1, Section 1, all legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States which shall consist of a Senate and House of Representatives. The US Supreme Court, McGrain v. Doherty, 1927, the power of inquiry with process to enforce it is an essential and appropriate auxiliary to the legislative function. Watkins versus United States, 1957, the power of the Congress to conduct investigations is inherent in the legislative process. Since James Comer announced his plans, critics also claim that it's petty and partisan to investigate the president's son. To make Hunter Biden the focus of Republicans' first press conference, to skew the campaign promises and focus on the partisan investigations of political opponents, it's just a tired repeat of the Obama era. And Originally, it was going to be investigating Hunter Biden, but truly, they don't have a basis on which to investigate Hunter Biden. It is just theatrics at the worst. You have these sort of petty fights that are already being started by the other side. You have Lindsey Graham going after Hunter Biden. But it's not about Hunter Biden, it's about Joe Biden. It's not about the president's son, it's about the president. It's about Joe Biden, now the president, acting as the head of a corrupt family influence peddling operation involving a hostile foreign power while he was vice president. And there's a wider reason the Joe Biden corruption scandal must be fully investigated. It is the swamp business model. The revolving door between business and government, lobbying dressed up as strategic advice, bribes dressed up as donations to campaigns or non-profits, straight up bribes in the form of fake salaries and lavish gifts to family members. All of it legalized corruption enabled by a cozy swamp consensus where both parties turned a blind eye because they've been coining it in for decades. The establishment tried to dismiss it as Hunter Biden's laptop, just trivial, salacious gossip. No, it is the textbook example of the systemic, structural corruption of the American political system. The establishment loved to go on about Putin's kleptocracy. But right here in America, we have the Biden kleptocracy. Kleptocracy, uh, yeah. Kleptocracy, klep the guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> yes, you, you, Joe Biden, and your entire corrupt family, you're the kleptocracy. That's what this is about. The Clinton kleptocracy with their corrupt foundation, the Pelosi kleptocracy with the insider trading. And yes, it is both sides. Look at the Cheney kleptocracy with the millions they've made as corrupt arms dealers in the military industrial complex through their own company, Halliburton, profiteering from the wars they themselves pushed. For years, Americans have despaired as they look at politicians and see a bunch of people in it for themselves. They're not wrong. That's why, at least until Trump came along, nothing much seemed to change. Whoever was in power, to take just one, but a central example, under the bipartisan establishment consensus, the average income of the American worker after inflation had been flat or falling for 50 years until the Trump blue collar boom. That's why all this matters. As long as the politicians are focused on their interests, they're not focused on ours. There is a huge amount to expose, uncover and investigate. Here's our commitment to you. We're on it. We're on the case. A renewed emphasis here on this show every Sunday night on bringing you the truth about corruption and wrongdoing of all kinds and in all places. Real accountability. That's the next revolution we need. Tell us what you think on the new free Twitter at Steve Hilton X and at Next Rev FNC and share this message when we post it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.